how does a guy go from you picked up basketball what and you were in sixth grade to then really becoming serious what sophomore freshman year of high school to then getting a scholarship at UCLA to then going to three final fours what's the secret how did you do it uh honestly just having uh good people surrounding you and just people that kind of lead you in the right path and uh, want want uh, good things for you uh, and just uh, and pretty much just staying away from those uh, the negative vibes and negative people and just and just uh, and obviously just working hard one person that has got a whole lot of positive vibes for you was James Keefe. We had him on a little bit ago, and I asked him about you, and he said he's everybody's best friend. He's down to earth, gives his heart out on the court. You see him dive on the ball, putting himself out there, and just brought it every day. So where did that come from, that work ethic and that tenacity, that physicality that I think you really can't teach? Uh I, I just feel like it's just it comes from from where where I grew up and uh, obviously my, my my mother uh, the way she, the the way she worked hard and uh, doing everything she did just to give me uh, everything that uh, I needed to, uh, to to be successful and to be where where I got to UCLA, where I am now. Uh, she, she pretty much raised me on her own. And, and, and it's something, I mean, uh, there's nothing I could do that's going to ever repay, repay her for, for raising me and making me the man I am now. Well, part of your way of recognizing her and everything that she did was taking her last name mm -hmm. as a way to honor her. And, how proud do you think she is of everything you've done so far? You have so much still in front of you, but just what you've done, given where you came from and how far you've made it. Uh, I mean, I hope she's really proud. Uh, <laughs> she tells me, I mean, she's proud. She's happy. Uh, she always tells me uh, that as, as long as, no matter what I'm doing, as long as I'm happy, that she's going to be happy. So uh, I always try to do the best. Uh, not only for me, but for, for her and my family. And, and I feel like everything I do is, is to, make, to, make those, to make those people proud. You're making the Bruin community obviously very proud. You can follow Lorenzo on Twitter, RealMadaLo14. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley. How about this? We're watching The Last Dance, and I know you've been really involved in watching that and reminiscing about how Michael Jordan – made an effect on you and that Bulls team and those teams he was on. How much Dennis Rodman do you see in your own game? Uh, it's funny because the, uh, I, in my couple years back when I was, uh, before a couple of my injuries, I was, I was playing, I was playing hard. Obviously my, my work ethic and everything, the way my style of play, it's just going all out and doing everything uh that's sometimes not really on the on the stat sheet but it helps the teams win and that's something if you're a basketball fan and and if you're and if you know the game of basketball like you'll you'll kind of appreciate the, the those things you know and, and there's a lot of people over here in mexico that they'll call me the mexican rodman and, and like the mexican rodman and everything and i mean uh i mean I feel like I play kind of similar just because uh, no matter what, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to out hustle everybody, uh, I'm diving for loose balls, taking charges, uh, and doing all that stuff. And lo looking at, I used to watch a lot of videos of him, but now looking at uh, the last dance and, and the impact that he had on, on that team, it was, it's, it, you kind of like see that, uh, I mean, maybe that, that's the kind of impact I had on, on different teams that I, yeah. I've been on, you know, and, and, it's, and it's cool. I mean, I like it. I mean, I, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I was in the, that type to go 
the party guy and, and all that stuff, you know, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's, but I mean, the, the style of play that that's, I definitely see, see that in me a little bit. And then the, the nickname El Matador, how did that come about? That's, that's funny. Uh, I played a year in Puerto, I played two years, but my first year I played in Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, the team I was in, uh, there used to be this guy, uh, a Puerto Rican guy and his family they used to, they used to, they started going to the games and I used to notice a big Mexican flag in, in the Puerto Rico where we played at. And I was like, man, like, what's going on? <laughs> so like after the game, like the the man and his family, like I was like, I want to meet him, you know? Yeah. And, and started talking to him, meeting him. And they became, uh, good friends a good family and then uh they started to nickname me the 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 matador matador but they used to call me that because i used to be dunking everything and they said yeah. I, I used to be killing the rim so it was like <laughs> that's matando el aro so i was i was like he's like you're gonna you're trying to murder the rim you're trying to kill yeah. the rim now so that's that name came uh started in puerto rico and and it's stuck ever since yeah now it's on your your Twitter handle, basically, yeah. I mean, you've got it on your title. It has fit. And then your, you know, your time with the Mexican national team and getting to know Jaime Jaquez. And yeah. I saw that you got a chance to meet him during this last basketball season and you guys connected. Mm-hmm. And he said he's always looked up to you. And then you said you've always looked up to him and he inspires you. Where did that relation start? And how have you guys been able to help each other along the way? Well, I had actually met him uh, before he went to UCLA. Uh, I was with the national team, and he went out to Mexico City where we were practicing uh, to practice with the team. I mean, he was young. He, I mean, he just wanted to get his his feet wet and see how how the whole uh, preparation and and, and uh, uh, concentration was. Uh, prior to a tournament, and and he did well. Uh, obviously, he was he was really young, and and then, but I, I met him, his his father, his dad, and and, and I met uh, his grandpa. They were all there, and at that time, I already knew he was going to go to UCLA, so he had, he had committed, uh, and and. And I was, I was like, man, it's like a brewing, you know, I had to take yeah. care of it. Like I, sure. I, I, so I kind of like started talking to him and, and, you know, and ever since then, like, uh, I was like, I sent him a message here and there uh, through Twitter, Instagram or whatever. And just tell him like, hey, man, good game. Or, hey, I'm, I'm really proud of, you, of what you're doing. Uh, keep doing your thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was like, not to put a lot of pressure on you, but you have uh, all Mexico, you know, rooting <laughs> for you. And, but he embraces it. Like, he, he likes it. And, and, I mean, I like his confidence, his confidence level, his work ethic. His work ethic is, is great. Uh, actually, the, my coach for my – the team that I'm on now, my current team, uh, he was a team on the national team when Jaime went to play in the Pan, Pan American Games, I think it was. Sure. Uh, he was he was his coach, Jaime's coach. So uh, he he fell in love with Jaime too. He, like he's always keeping up with with Jaime and how he's doing. He's always asking me about Jaime. Uh, so yeah, I mean uh, Jaime has a has that that impact on everybody. Like he's a he's a nice guy, nice kid, good, great listener, coachable. And I mean, ho- hopefully, uh, once all this goes back to normal uh, and UCLA starts playing again, uh, he'll have a, a, a great sophomore season. You, you, you nailed it on the head because he's coachable. And like you, he's got no off switch. Like he just always gives it 100% out on the court. He never takes a playoff. Coaches love him like they loved you. Is there anybody that you played with at UCLA that reminds you a little bit about like him beyond yourself? Because I can see some similarities in, in, in how you guys address and work hard at the game. But anybody else that you recall that has any bit of similarity with him as far as a player? I feel like just uh, 
the way he's always hustling and playing hard. And he, I mean, he could score. He's a scorer. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe, I mean, geez, that's a. I see him a lot like you, though, just because of how he does whatever needs to be done and doesn't have to be stats. It can be steals or rebounds and block maybe shots. Like, maybe like kind of like a Luke Mbamute, too. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just because he's, he's always, uh, I mean, maybe he's not uh, typical size for the for his position or, or he, he had he, that one playing the four sometimes or whatever. But it doesn't matter because he's, he, I mean, the game I went to go watch him against Arizona, he was – uh, and then I went to go watch him against SC. Uh, he was switch and he was guarding like a, a way bigger guy than him, but he was like trying to push him, uh, fronting him and just moving his feet. You know, uh, I feel like kind of like Luke. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like Luke and maybe maybe also uh, Cedric Bozeman just, to, wow. just because yeah. the type of uh, Cedric was – Obviously, Cedric was a played point guard, but he could defend and play every position too, uh, and and long arms, and and I feel like Jaime could uh, be that type of a player too. I mean, obviously, could be a lot better. Yeah, I, I totally agree with all of your comparisons there. And then I know you had said that UCLA recruited you late, and mm-hmm. you had other schools that were interested, obviously, beforehand. How did Ben Hallen step right in there and convince you, smooth talk his way, and say, hey, Lorenzo, we want you. You're on board, right? Uh, that was crazy. Like, I had a – I already had visits set up to, dip, uh, to Oregon, Arizona, uh, Washington, and, like, two other schools I, I can't even remember. Uh, but I was really le- leaning towards going to Oregon – just because uh, one of my good friends, Bryce Taylor, went to Oregon. And we played AAU, and he was like, hey, let's just go to Oregon, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was talking to Ernie, Ernie Kent, which was the coach back yeah. at, at that time. And uh, I was like, man, I think I'm, I, I'm just going to take my visits and then uh, just commit to Oregon. But then Lorenzo Romar, just like, kind of like, he was from, he's from LA, LA guy, you know. Uh, he's like, man, just Washington, you'll be able to uh, always hold out, blah, blah. But then uh, I, there was a tournament that I played in L.A. with, with the Palms. And it was like one play that just changed the whole scenario. I took a charge on this on this guy, uh, Joey Dorsey. Of course, Memphis guy, right? Yeah. Uh, he, he, he had gotten like a a defensive rebound. He was trying to push it. And I just saw him coming. I just stood there and just took charge. And it hurt. <laughs> he, he was a grown man. You know, he's like a grown man. And right after that, uh, that's, I think this, that same night, like or after the game, like Coach, Coach Donnie Daniels uh, was the assistant uh, at the time. Uh, he calls me. He's like, "Hey, uh, Lorenzo, this is coach, uh, assistant coach Donnie Daniels at UCLA. Uh, we just got hired, Ben Howland. Blah, blah. Uh, we already got a recruiting class with uh, Jordan Farmer, Josh Shib, Aaron Aflalo. We want you to be the fourth guy. Uh, our first recruiting class. We're trying to do this, this and that. And I was like, and then he's like, all right. And then Coach Howland calls me right after that. And then he's like, hey, Lorenzo, we just uh, we saw that charge you took. We saw how tough you played. Uh, that's what we're looking for uh, here at UCLA. Uh, that's that's the style I want. I want to play. Bring back to the West Coast. Uh, and then uh, he told me it's between you and uh, I forgot the other player. I think it may have been David Pageant or Scott Burgess. Okay, one of those two. He was like. We offered him the scholarship too, but if you want it, it's yours. So I was like, but that, like it all came like this, you know, and, and it, was, it was crazy just because, I mean, I had, I had barely set up my visits. And so like when, when they told me all that, like I guess I was kind of like in disbelief. Yeah. Like I was like, 
it's just crazy. So, and they offered me just a scholarship brought on the spot. So I was like, uh, like I didn't know what to say. So I was just like, let me think about it. Uh, yeah. and, I'll get you, and I'll get back to you. But like in my head, I was like, I'm I'm gonna go to UCLA. Like, like this, this is a no-brainer. Like I'm staying at home, close to home. You know, my mom can go watch and play. So like I don't know if it was like the next day after that or two days after. Like I called back because I don't want the other kid to take my spot. <laughs> uh, I call him back and like, hey, I want to go there. Like I'm, I want to commit. And then I took my visit and wow. everything history. Lorenzo Madariel, I love that story and. I had, we had Michael Roll on a couple of days ago and he explained how he was recruited to UCLA and he got, yeah. he, he, you know, he told me this, you, you know, this, he basically thought he was getting a prank call from mm -hmm. Ben Howland. He took the call and he was like, he thought it was a buddy thing, basically acting like he was Ben Howland. He, he didn't, he didn't believe it. it was actually Ben. So it's sort of, it's kind of funny how it's a little bit similar to you. And all of a sudden you get this call out of nowhere. And then you get to UCLA, and then you have the three final four runs. Mm -hmm. Which of, of those runs do you feel like was the national championship team? Out of those three teams, those three final four appearances, which one had the best chance of winning it all? Uh, I mean, if you tell me all of them, but yeah. real, realistic. Uh, honestly, like the first one, and and the last one but like to me the first one just because uh we really weren't expected to get there so i mean and we got there with with uh the great team that we had to get uh and we're like man like we already made it this far you know like i might, I might as well just win it like yeah you know <laughs> like we made it to the national championship that year so it was like you know like we're in the national championship uh so let's just win you know like i, I thought we all thought like it, like it was ours like we're gonna win but then it came florida florida just kind of like uh outplayed us just our our game uh like the way we set up the gameplay, like the game plan, like uh, Florida read it perfectly and, and they just uh, kind of like outsmarted us. But I mean, I feel like that and then the last year just because we had Kevin, uh, we had Russell coming up on his peak and everybody was playing well, Darren Collison, you know, like everybody, everybody was playing great. and. But I mean, we ran into Derrick Rose in the semifinal, and which was unfortunate just because uh, later on that year, I guess they got disqualified or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It makes no sense to me. So, I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, it was like, I mean, but it's good. I mean, it was a great experience, good, good, uh, good runs. Uh, and I'm just happy I was able to be a part of it. Of all the games you were a part of, how often, whether it's a family member, a friend, let me anybody, interrupt you. Let me. Let me yeah, I know yeah, yeah, yeah. Go I, for I, it. Go for it. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know where you're going with this one. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> you're gonna talk about the Gonzaga game, right? How did you know? Are you a mind reader? I told. Him, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's fascinating. <laughs> I love hearing everybody on that team's perspective from, from having, let's see, we've had obviously Michael Roll. We're going to get your perspective, Alfred Aboya and Ryan Hollins, but your perspective would love to hear it. That game, what took place, Adam Morrison, obviously crying at the end there. Mm -hmm. How have you processed all of that happened? Because that is probably the, my favorite basketball game of all time yeah uh it's crazy uh that 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 one where uh the last play where well, i mean it wasn't the last play where where jordan kind of like rips the ball from batista i think and yes. then or 
It was it Jordan? Or was uh, it uh, Luke Richard? Did he, like, no, at half court? Uh, no, I, I forget, but I think Jordan slaps it away from Batista. He grabs it. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Jordan. Before, yeah, to go to the go-ahead bucket. Yeah. And then gives it to Luke. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Uh, at, at that time, like, I was confused. Like, I didn't. I thought we were we were still down one. So like when all that happens, like everybody's celebrating, like, like I'm like, what, what's going on? I turn yeah. and look at the score and I see that we're up and I'm like, oh <laughs> so like I start getting excited and it's crazy. Then then uh I think Luke comes from, from behind and takes the ball from Rabio. Yeah. And and I was like, Oh man, this is this is crazy, you know, like like what is going on? And then uh, when Batista gets that last shot, I was like, "Oh man, he got a he got a great look." He did. Like like, I, like that whole uh, uh, second or whatever that it was. Yeah. It, it felt like it was like minutes. You know, it felt like it was so long. Like that whole by the time that that whole pass went full court. Yeah. And then Batista catches it, turns around, makes like a fade, turns around. I was like, man, it's like Christian Leitner all over again. Oh, yeah. But I mean, fortunate for us. I mean, he missed, and damn, it was crazy. I saw, I was watching that play, the go ahead basket, and I was like looking for you on the sideline, and you must have jumped like four feet in the air when mm -hmm. that ball went in, and the whole the whole sideline did for UCLA. And so then after you win this game, there was obviously a whole lot of emotion that was involved in this because of the comeback and how defeating it was on the Gonzaga side. And then you saw a guy like Adam Morrison, and I think it was Cedric Bozeman who told me, and you would obviously know much more than I would, that was the first to go up to Adam and just try to, to console him or comfort him. But what was it like seeing all of this unfold and how it all just evaporated for Gonzaga in the end. Uh, I think, the, I mean, the first person I saw that went up to uh, Adam was Aaron. Costello. That's right. Okay. Uh, but uh, honestly, p personally, like to me, it was it was satisfying. I mean, not to sound like a, I mean, like a bad person, but just a competitor. You know, just the yeah, I mean, just the way he, at the time, I mean, you know, like that competitive spirit just kind of like takes over you, okay. and obviously for him too. But just the way he carried himself on the court was, I mean, he, he felt like he was better than everybody else, sure. and he, he was he was talking he was talking throughout the whole game, and just to see that, uh, I mean. It was it was it wasn't gonna be him or us, you know. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be crying. If, if, if yeah, I, I, I would have been crying honestly if like something like that happened to us. Like I would have been crying too. So I mean, it, I, I was happy that it wasn't us. And and at that time, not, I mean, now I'm more mature, more like it was. It was satisfying to me. Honestly. Yeah. Well, you play to win the game. I mean, it's that yeah. simple. Yeah. What was he saying? Because I heard guys were talking about how Adam would – they were saying, like, he would talk on the free throw line and just, like, I don't know. Like, he was obviously – guys, everybody smack talks, more some more than others. But do you remember anything that was, like, you know, guys would say to him or he would say to them that was, like, okay, now I'm going to play even harder because he said that or just kind of got the competitive juices flowing a little bit more? Uh, I don't really remember. I just – the one, the couple of times that I I would hear him say something, it was kind of like sarcastic. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, uh, hey nice try. Hey, uh, yeah, nice try, but you, you can't <laughs> stop me. You know, some like in that type. Uh, kind of like what they talked about, how Tim Dunk used to trash talk. Just, yeah. Uh, hey, oh, man, hey, nice defense, but next, maybe next time. You know? <laughs> like something like that. Uh, but, uh, man, yeah, it, it's just – uh, I mean, to me, like players, uh, I don't. Even to this point, like I don't like players that that feel like they're way better than everybody else. Because, uh, I mean, obviously, a little confidence is good, but 
I mean, you play a team sport and you play uh, to to make the team better. I mean, it's not always about about the player, but I, I've met some players throughout my career where, I mean, it could be it could be uh, hurtful t- towards towards the team, you know, and it's like, man, it, it, and it makes the team feel uncomfortable. And I mean, I'm not saying he was like that because sure. you know, his teammates loved him. It, it, he was just the type where he just wanted to win at that at that point. Sure. And, uh, but I mean, there's players where they you could sense it. I mean, you know it, and you just catch that vibe. But, but uh, yeah, yeah. I totally see what you're saying. And, you know, they relied so much on him and he mm-hmm. was like a national player of the year candidate. So obviously mm-hmm. he had a lot of confidence. Final questions for you here. Lorenzo, really, really appreciate this. This has been a whole lot of fun is, is take us through what you're doing right now. You obviously are still playing, but how has that been changed temporarily because of what's going on in the world right now? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm in Mexico. The season ended here probably like three weeks before the whole um, the whole COVID started. Uh, so we were able to finish the season. My team won the championship, uh, I, but I got to this team where I'm at now, like mid season, because I was on a different team where the the scenario was was different. Uh, but I was fortunate to to come to this team, which I, I was already on this team like two years ago. We won the championship too, and I I wanted to come back here just because it's close, uh, close to LA, close to home. Uh, I'm, I'm a four hour drive, uh, and uh, yeah, so doing that. And but now, I mean, there's everything's pretty much shut down. Uh, you can't really work out anywhere. Uh, there's a gym in in the little place where I live. Mm-hmm. Uh, they used they used to be closed, and they just kind of opened that bag. And I, I like working out at night, so I, I go I go. I started going during the night to work out. Uh, then I have a, a room right here in my house that I turned into like a little gym. Oh, cool. And so, I, I mean, I just do with what I have. I have kind of like some resistance bands and and a couple a couple weights, free weights. Uh, but now that they open the gym, like it's a, lo- a little easier. Sure. Uh, I mean, you still can't add and touch the basketball and shot a basketball since all this started. So uh, I feel like I'm a, I don't know. Like, <laughs> you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, but. Yes, but 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 I mean it's good. I mean I got to get to spend time with with my girlfriend, with my dogs, good. Uh, uh, and just just enjoying it, you know. Just because once you're you start playing, I uh, I think this this next year, this next season, is is gonna be my last one playing. Uh, just because I've been going through uh, uh, this knee injury that's been bothering me, uh, it, but it just depends. Yeah, but like I think this this next season is gonna be like my last one, and uh, uh, and just throughout the season you, you just travel a lot and you don't get to spend a lot of time with with your loved ones, and sure. that's something like I'm enjoying right now while while I can I mean, taking the negative and turning it into a positive kind of a little bit. That's what you've done your whole life, and that's what's so admirable about you is that. You, it's never woe is me. It's it's always how can I get better? How can I turn something into a positive? And you've done that. I mean, you look at your whole resume of your life, and that's what's really cool about you. And and obviously inspiring about you is you've done that, and and you you motivate me, man. I mean, and, and many 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 others. And I just so grateful for you here, Lorenzo, for doing this, and really appreciate your time. This was really cool. Thanks so much for being a part of this. Yeah, no problem, man. And anytime. I mean, uh, I mean, right now I'm, I'm, I'm pretty free. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you.